America, as you can see from this picture, is a very large continent. It has a greater landmass than the United States, China, India, and Germany and Spain combined. What this means, though, is that 50% have no access to a hospital or even a single doctor. What this results in is that 6 million children die a year from preventable diseases. Diseases that we can easily cure here in the United States. And one of eight of those children died before the age of five. I'm Kyle Hayes, and I'm a marketing associate with Faisal, or Pfizer. And I also do volunteer work with Mercy Ships, and I've been doing that for the past two years. I'm here today to tell you why it is that Pfizer and Mercy Ships be a great partner and be a great team for you to donate. To come, I will talk about who Pfizer is, what their goals are, their global goals, who is Mercy Ships, what they do, how they impact the world and how Pfizer and Mercy Ships can work together. Pfizer was a company founded in 1849 by two cousins who had one goal in mind, to make medicine that can help prevent diseases and fight diseases and improve the global health. They started in the United States and have reached globally into France, Europe mainly, China, and Africa. To do this, they've partnered together with several medical associations, schools, whatnot, to improve the world's global health and awareness of health. They've even made great strides in Africa. There's a bit of a gap. It's a very large region. You saw the numbers in the front. Six million children died. It's a great number of people. That's where Mercy Ships comes in. Mercy Ships was founded 35 years ago in Texas. A husband and wife had the need to improve the health of the developing nations of the world. What Mercy Ships is, is it is a floating vessel that has all the medical, it's a medical facility, and has all the equipment and personnel that you would find in some of the greatest hospitals here in the United States. It has four operating rooms, the ability to have 80 beds to check on the ICU, houses 400 serving employees, and is the best way to transfer medical attention, considering that 90 of one of the 100, 95 of the 150 big cities are poor cities, and that most of the population live within 100 miles of a port. Mercy Ships has made over 575 port visits, 70 developing countries, and is currently working in West Africa, in the countries of Ghana, Nigeria, and have made great strides. They have served $1 billion worth of services. And they're not only confined to the sea, but they go out into the countries that they're working in, build medical facilities, train medical personnel, so that when Mercy Ships leaves, they are able to continue the work and so that they don't have to rely on Mercy Ships alone. And Mercy Ships is considered a nonprofit organization in 14 different countries and abides by all tax regulations of those countries and has a very high impact on their countries in the countries that they've served in. And have made, once again, amazing feats with the surgeries they have performed. Now, if you turn over the paper that I've placed in front of you, you'll see some of the stories of transformation that Mercy Ships has developed. The first one, Jonathan, age of 14, had major damage under her after childbirth. She was diagnosed with uh, obstetric pestula repair, which is a major amount of damage after one um, birth of child, and it usually causes major damage to their organs. It's very hard for them to control their bladder afterwards. And they're shunned from their communities just because everyone's ashamed of them. 
She came in and she was repaired immediately. George, or as they called him on the ship, Baby George, is a five days old and has a cleft lip repair. This is a common repair done in Africa. And it helps the fact that these babies can now eat better and they can receive nutrition in a better fashion. The third group is Asan also, a listener. These boys are twins and were blind from, the, from birth. And they have had cardiac removal. These two twins hadn't even seen their mother since birth. They haven't even seen each other. They didn't know what they looked like. They didn't know what their twin, like who their twin was. Percy Ships performed surgery and recovered their eyesight. Awa, which is a very touching story in my heart, who mother had seen swelling in her mouth and had thought it was a new tooth coming in. But after weeks of swelling, it had to subside. And it turned out there was a tumor growing in her mouth. The tumor grew to a substantial size. And the only way that she was surviving was the fact that she was receiving nutrients through a straw. They brought her into Mercy Ships, we took out the tumor, we did plastic surgery on her face, we recovered it to where she was able to go back to her town, or her village. And she had previously been shunned because they believed it was a curse. One of the major problems you'll find in Africa is that many of the, many of the villagers who have tumors are seen as being cursed because they have no idea what it actually is. And so they only revert back to spiritual aspects. And that's really answered for it. Abel, who's a great child, had a problem with his muscles that had stopped growing after receiving the injection. But the bones, however, did not stop growing, causing his size to grow in a reverse manner. He was able to learn how to adapt to this by balancing out his weight forward and allowing himself to be able to even play soccer and even be goalie part of his team. However, this made for a lot of ridicule as a young 11-year-old going through that time of age. It's, it's, it's very concerning when you're disfigured. Reggie Ships was able to repair his legs, and he was able to walk up straight, and with several instances of therapy, he was able to recover, and even, he was even excelling in a soccer group run by her. And you may be thinking how much this actually costs to the families. It costs nothing. Reggie Ships says this free of charge. And there is no process of picking candidates. They come in if they can get to the port. We receive them if we can. And we perform, we perform the surgery as soon as we can. And we stay with them as long as it takes for them to develop back and to recover fully. And what I'm here today to ask you for is that Mercy Ships is a very expensive process. Our revenue only brings about $1 million. It costs us now, with that $1 million revenue, it costs us $4 million to keep the Mercy ships going. Especially after Mercy, it's one of our biggest vessels that we've had. $4 million a year? $4 million a year. That's right. And I'm here today to ask you for only $300,000. And what that can pay for, that will pay for either the food we have to have on board to keep our faculty going, or to serve to our um, serve to people recovered. We could go to the gasoline repairs that that ship needs, and once we dock, they repair everything that needs to be repaired, so that we can go another five months in that port, helping the community at large. This also goes to vehicles, vehicle repairs that we keep on ship, so that people can get to the villages a lot quicker. It will also go to the fact that you'll be providing medical insurance for the families that come in. The money will go to the procedures that need to be done, the surgeries, the x-ray machines, the radiology department that takes the x-rays. You can choose where you want the money to go. $300,000, though, will be greatly appreciated in relationships. 
and it goes to a great cause. To partner with Pfizer and Mercy Ships is the completion of a puzzle. It's to better the health of the global community, to improve awareness. So that even the fact that not only will we repair them, but we also put out to the villagers that this is not a curse, they need medical attention. This is something that can be fixed, something that can easily be fixed a lot of times with preventable diseases. And all it takes is a donation of $300,000. Thank you, and I have a couple of questions. Um, the ship, how many days of